Warning, the content of this video is quite graphic in nature. It features topics very unsafe for children, including content of a descriptively sexual nature and tales of investment banking. You have been warned. So we're about to cold call Grant McDonald and see if we can get through. It's half past nine in Canada right now, which is, by all intents and purposes, a really quite rude time to cold call someone and ask them <laughs> questions about their about their profession. But I'm going to try it nonetheless. Do you want the questions? Oh, we're off. Hello? Hi, is this Grant McDonald? Yes. <laughs> Back in 2017, my friend Jim contacted me with news of a new artist he'd found on Spotify. The artist's name was Grant McDonald, and he billed himself as hard rock and country. To my surprise, I found out that he had over 1,000 songs and dozens of albums uploaded to Spotify and iTunes, all published after 2010. I had to find out more, so I started listening to his music. What I found was that Grant McDonald was not simply a musician in the traditional sense of the word. Grant's music largely consists of what sound to be stock loops. Some tracks are hard-hitting electronic grooves, while others are hard rock and metal beats with chugging electric guitars. I'm unclear on whether Grant performs these guitar tracks himself or not. However, I'm inclined to believe that the entirety of the performances are simply stock loops from a cheap stock library, arranged in the DAW and structured to fit his needs. Musical styles range from hard-hitting EDM to heavy rock and metal, funk rock, country and western. The real kicker on these tracks is the vocals and the lyrics. You see, Grant McDonald fits firmly in the genre of spoken word erotic gay music. His most popular track, Ram Ranch, largely features a single lyrical theme that is introduced and then elaborated on. 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch, big herd driving car- And so on and so forth. Now you have a general sense of what Grant McDonald likes to write about. Nearly every single one of his tunes features this exact topic. In fact, some songs have exactly the same lyrics as other songs, sometimes re-performed or shuffled around in order, but often just directly copied and pasted from track to track. Presumably, Grant intends this music to actually be erotic. The samples of gay porn in the background of several tracks seem to support this notion. Each lyric is recorded onto the track through a microphone of notably lower quality than anything else on the track, potentially a gaming headset of some description, giving the audible plosives and occasional vocal clipping. The range of vocab with which Grant uses to express himself, while initially colourful, ends up being quite derivative. Grant has several key phrases that he uses to build songs, and a handful of different characters that feature in the lyrics, generally performing some explicit act of gay sex. What I've attempted to do in the following section is summarise the recurring topics and phrases in Grant McDonald's songs. His lyrics will often be directed to one of three characters. Sean, as referenced in Sean's Big Cum <laughs> Gavin Newsom, as referenced in <laughs> Gavin Newsom, and most perplexingly, Prince Harry, as referenced in Prince Harry's 12-inch <laughs> It's worth noting that it's unclear... <laughs> It's worth noting that it's unclear if the measurement of Prince Harry's penis is taken from some factual document or source, or simply an invention or estimation by McDonald. Either way, these three men were evidently alluring enough to warrant dozens, if not hundreds, of individual songs about them. While the sheer amount of published work was jaw-dropping in itself, no pun intended, the plot thickened, no pun intended, when I listened through a decent-sized example of the music. Each song seems to contain some assembling of a few bass elements off of which Grant builds lyrics. In fact, one can choose any random song from McDonald's body of work, skip to a random part of the song, and expect to hear one of the following phrases. Big hard throbbing co- <laughs> Deep suck it or f Nearly always repeated three times. Wanting <laughs> On your <laughs> Spread your <laughs> And audible samples of gay porn sprinkled throughout the song. So on and so forth. Viewers can draw their own conclusions about this content. Initially, I was simply under the impression that Grant McDonald was simply a spoken word homoerotic sampling artist looking to make his way in the world. But further research revealed a backstory more intricate than anything I could have possibly imagined. You see, 
Information on Grant McDonald's history proved significantly difficult to find. There was no Wikipedia page, no Discogs page, no eponymous website, and no live performance videos. I could not even find a single candid image of the man. To this day, an unconfirmed headshot is all that is available, sourced from an IMDB page that only added to the madness, stating that he studied drama at UCLA while appearing in Hollywood film productions. I could not find any of the Hollywood films in which McDonald featured. However, I did find a large number of personal films that he reportedly produced and directed, all of which featuring his music extensively. Many of these were presumably gay pornographic films, while others covered another subject entirely, one I will return to later in this video. Due to the difficulty in obtaining personal information or backstory on Grant McDonald, I realised that my research was going to have to be more fragmentary in nature. I chanced upon a few old interviews from 2018, including an extremely informative 40-minute interview from a YouTuber calling himself Mike Hunt. In this interview, Grant expounded on some of his musical influences, citing Tool as a main influence on the song Sean Loves Sucking Black Cocks. Really can hear it. Outside of musical influences, however, Grant's backstory became all the more interesting after the Mike Hunt interview. The exact events I'm about to recount are pieced together from fuzzy and unreliable details. However, I feel a larger picture of intrigue is painted simply through analysis. Apparently, Grant McDonald was an investment banker in the 70s and 80s with a company called McDonald Bank. He appeared to be partnered with the Reserve Oil and Gas Company and claims to have overseen the merger of Reserve with Getty Oil, a business move that earned Reserve shareholders 4 billion Canadian dollars. However, the merger between companies did not result in any compensation for McDonald himself, who claims to this day he has owed a figure to the tune of $6,044,000 for his efforts. The situation was nothing short of fascinating to me, and so I dug and found the website of McDonald Bank. The site looked legit. Despite the Times New Roman font, pixelated stock image, and promoted link that led back to the same page that it was on, the site did indeed hold useful information. The three links at the top of the page were equally intriguing. The first of the links simply led back, again, to the page that it was embedded on. The third link took me to a page which appeared to feature pictures of McDonald's family, both of whom fought in world wars. There was also a contact phone number, which I saved for later use. Scrolling down the page, I was half shocked to find legal documents, one from the 80s, one from 2001, both referring to the Getty Reserve merger. One directly corroborates his story of being owed six and a half million dollars, appearing to be from a team of attorneys in the year 1980. The letter described the success of the then recent acquisition and the outstanding finder's fee owed to McDonald. The other document was dated 21 years later, May 2001, and was from a man by the name of Jean N. Levine, a fellow with a lengthy list of qualifications and titles. In the letter, which was addressed to the CEO of Getty Oil, Levine refers to McDonald. Apparently they met for the first time in 1971. The letter outlines how McDonald had been an advisor to the Rank Real Estate Organization and apparently presented Reserve Oil Company to several larger businesses as a possible company for acquisition. Levine describes McDonald as fascinated by Getty and explains that Getty's acquisition of Reserve for $620,947,000 increase the value of Getty Oil from $6.5 billion to $10 billion, subsequently corroborating the $4 billion bucks figure with an error margin of uh, ap apparently $500 million. The second link on McDonald's website. It took me to an Amazon page where Grant McDonald was selling what appeared to be a hardcover book detailing the situation with the reserve Getty acquisition. The book was available for an asking price of 150 Australian dollars. The book, and several others like it, seem to talk about the aforementioned outstanding money owed to McDonald, while delving into potential shady dealings that Getty Oil's founder, J.P. Getty, engaged in. According to McDonald's book, Getty was charged with espionage in 1940 by the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Getty was allegedly using his oil supplies to ship barrels of crude oil to aid Hitler and his Nazi war effort in exchange for valuable Jewish art to add to his considerable art collection. The story was also covered in Grant's previously mentioned filmography. Remember how I mentioned that not all of his films were gay porn? 
Well, it seemed that the rest of them were feature-length documentaries filmed, voiced, scored and edited by McDonald, featuring his trademark gaming headset sound quality to describe the bizarre escapade and loss, betrayal, espionage and oil mergers. The description for the film, along with the blurb from his book, appeared to be lyrics from one of his songs. Lo and behold, there was indeed a Grant McDonald song with the title Four Billion Bucks. The lyrics for the song went on to describe, well, I'll let the song speak for itself. I put the reserve merger together in Wall Street. Even that was no small feat. I saw Getty Oil acquire reserve oil and earned the Gettys four billion bucks. And do you think the Gettys would pay my bill? Every letter received quite a shrill. But Finn, I hear you protest. You said Grant's music was exclusively about gay sex. Well... I lied. Grant writes exclusively about two topics I soon found during my research, with one being far more popular than the other. Visitors to his Spotify page might notice a recently published album as of February 2020, titled A Billion Bucks R.A.K. Further scrolling down the page, I realised multiple albums out of McDonald's thousand song discography were devoted to telling this story. It seemed to predate any of his homoerotic spoken word material. In fact, a three minute scrolling odyssey down to the bottom of his Spotify page reveals that Grant's earliest published song is titled A Billion Bucks Club and was released in 2011. The song consists of a drum machine groove, synth samples and completely inaudible vocals. The next few dozen tracks also reference the ill-fated Getty deal and also McDonald's proclaimed best friend Jake. These songs, while expressing platonic and presumably romantic love for Jake, were not pornographic per se. Several other songs titled Jake feature exactly the same vocal recording. This happens to be a staple of McDonald's work. Many songs to this day have exactly the same lyrics or even the same exact audio file copied over from an earlier track. Occasionally, both the instrumental and the vocal audio files are copied, leaving the track sonically identical in every way to the track it was copied from. This perhaps explains how he has managed to produce so much work in under a decade of being an active musician. I wanted further clarification on this, so I joined the official Grant McDonald Discord server and asked some of his more devoted fans if there was any way of contacting him. His fans responded with multiple presumably facetious threats of extreme physical and sexual violence. I did not consider these threats to be legitimate. One user posted what he claimed was a Discord link to contact Grant directly. The link, instead of opening a new chat window or email conversation with Grant, simply led to archived images of gay porn. A slightly more helpful user directed me to read the rules of the Discord server. I did, and discovered that any individual pinging of Grant would result in an automatic mute. The server also saw the need to remind users that they have had issues with past users being investigated with law enforcement, so don't post or do any shit that could get the servers or its users into trouble with the law. I inquired about this. Apparently some previous users had made credible threats of domestic terrorism. Surely this meant that I had to find another way to contact Grant. You see, the enigma that is Grant McDonald is a mystery that somewhat refuses to resolve itself. He has no prominent video clips of himself or real personal information available. He simply has a large archive of difficult to find gay porn, books and documentaries that cover his extensive entanglement with the Getty Oil Company in mostly dot point form, and over 1,000 published songs on Spotify, most of which explicitly describe gay sex. I racked my brain for some kind of satisfying literary connection that would allow me to finally bridge the thematic gap between Grant's exploits as an investment banker and his gay sex stuff. However, I could find nothing. There is no obvious way to wrap up the life saga of a man whose online works reflect two such vastly different avenues of life. Grant McDonald will simply remain a hard-working investment banker whose story spans decades and who loves cowboy cocks. Or so I thought. So as it turns out, that's not the end of the story. I wish I had a huge thing that could answer all your questions, but I don't. Just a small addendum. Looking through the Wayback Machine at Grant's website, I found several very interesting things. One of which was long-form prose that seemed to have been ghost-written for him, detailing in first-person perspective the Getty slash Reserve oil merger. But even more intriguing was the presence of a home address and phone number for Grant McDonald, which is available on his current website as well. Now, we couldn't get through to it when he tried the other day, but lo and behold, my Canadian co-worker, who wishes to remain anonymous, 
happens to have family living in the same apartment block as Grant McDonald. So, tell us about this apartment complex that Grant lives in. So, it's a pretty nice high-rise apartment complex in Toronto and it overlooks the lake shore which is a pretty nice view if you have money for it and depending on which side your apartment faces you also can face the CN Tower which is basically the Canadian equivalent of the Eiffel Tower so all around really nice apartment and he definitely needs money to stay there I've got an aunt, an uncle, a cousin and a friend who lives there um, which is quite the coincidence, but they are all quite well off. Um, range of do uh, doctors, dentists, stuff like that. So Grant evidently does have money. This all corroborates his story of being an investment banker, but one thing I must say is that using my friend's international calling, we decided to cold call Grant. We'll see if it works. I should have thought up some interview questions before because at the, as it stands, I kind of feel like I understand the entire Grant McDonald scenario. But the one thing I do want to know is how, how exactly did he go from investment banking to Cowboy Cox? I want to know that and today we may find out. McDonald Banker, hello. Hi, is this Grant McDonald? Yes. Hi Grant, um, my name's Finn Taylor. I'm a journalist from Australia and I was just making a short write-up on you and the whole McDonald Bank Getty Reserve oil merger fiasco. Do you have five minutes for me to ask right. you a couple of questions? Are you, did you say you're Egan? Uh, Egan, my name is Finn. Okay, Finn. <clears throat> no, there was an Egan earlier today on Reddit uh posted several documents uh, from the FTC during the Texaco Getty takeover that actually were affiliated with the, uh, the Getty Reserve deal. Okay, so I put the Getty Reserve deal together, Getty Reserve Oil and Gas takeover at Wall Street. I brought in the initial bidder, Dennis and Mines, and uh, shucks dang, the Getty Oil Company just gave me the center finger like it told me, you know, like, or like, uh, who, who the fuck are you, you know? <laughs> yeah, well... I was um, and after, and then uh, th th then after Texaco took over Getty Oil, the market value increase basically earned them beyond four billion dollars. So I, you know, took to London, you know, up into Buckinghamshire where uh, John Paul Getty the second KBE lived and delivered my bill. I've been into Gordon Getty's mansion in San Francisco as an investment banker. But Jesus Christ. Finn, Yes. But Finn, ultimately, you know, it opened the door for my music. I, I, I recorded a billion bucks. I earned the Gettys a billion bucks. The way they treat me, it really sucks. Yeah, and then yeah. at the end, it was, you know, the Getty Museum sits the top Malibu while the corpse of the World War II scream, J.P. Getty, we know you. So it opened the door for my music, Finn. I see. I actually had a question regarding that. Um, I was wondering... At what point did you decide to go from like writing music about the Getty Oil Reserve Company to kind of just writing uh, homoerotic gay music? Because I think that the change in tone there is really quite interesting to me. I'm wondering at what point you decided yeah. to do that. Well, my, my first country song was Best Friend Jake. I see, yeah, I actually listened to that song on your Spotify. Yeah, yeah, my best friend Jake, we used to go swimming in the lake. And then I relayed it down to Nashville. Like, I've been to Nashville, and I've been to Memphis, and, you know, Texas, Paris, uh, you know, London many times, you know, up into Scotland. But the fact is, so I sent it down to Nashville radio stations, and they wouldn't play it because it was about two guys. You know, homophobic right, yeah. fucking Nashville. Nashville, you know, it's not much wonder Taylor Swift got the hell out of town because they're all fucking crazy there. Religious lunatics, Finn. No, that does make a lot of sense. I, like, I, I've always kind of imagined like music recording in the deep south of America to not be particularly friendly to gay people. Oh, for fucking sure. You know, Nashville fucking sucks, but they would take some money to donate to their church. So if you ever saw a way that, you know, like these crooked, you know, uh, radio stations survive, it's by manipulating the industry with, with, you know, shocks. I just like to thank the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, like, fuck, you see more goddamn crosses drug around in Nashville. So they wouldn't play Best Friend Jake. So then I did the Lonesome Boy in Tennessee. And so from there, did Lonesome you... 
did you just kind of procedurally decide to make the music more and more, just kind of more and more gay in response to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I did loads of boy in Tennessee, hoping one day to be as great as Brad Paisley and Dolly. Da, 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 da. And you know the cover of the guy in the red and white, you know, bicycle outfit with the big hard cock, Finn? Yeah, yeah, I, I, the, I know the one that you're talking about. Okay, so then, Finn, I record Cadillac Riding Cowboy. Cadillac Gulf Riding Street Cowboy. Jet on the runway. Yeah, yeah. Gulfstream Jet on the runway gets us where we want to go. Previs and tractor trailers in tow. And I basically told Nashville where to go. And I took out a piece of paper, Finn, yeah. and started writing 18 naked cowboys in the showers at Ram Ranch. <laughs> I see, <laughs> I see. Right, that explains it. I love how you can just kind of, like, you've got all these lyrics in, in your head. You can just tell me them off the top of your head. I, I love it. Hey, I just recorded Ram Ranch 240 over the last 90 minutes. Two number. I was listening to Ram Ranch, Ram Ranch 238 yesterday. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, with the whole yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just released 240 up at SoundCloud within the last hour. Just had, I had a couple more oh. questions for you, Grant, if you have a moment. Moment. Okay, okay. Okay, um, and one thing, it's a bit of a personal question, so feel free to say, feel free to decline to answer, but I was just wondering um, how old you were. No, I don't answer that question because, you know, even though I put the merger together in New York, I went to UCLA to study drama. I was a multimillionaire when I was in Toronto before I went to Hollywood. You know, my dad just died. He was knighted by the president of France. He fought at Normandy and D-Day to Berlin. You know, I, at heart, I'm 28 years old. I, I just put it that way. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a satisfy. That is a satisfying answer for me. Um, cool. Yeah. No, it, it's really great that you're willing to, to chat about this and just kind of uh, and answer these questions for me. It's it's. I'm really appreciative, man. Well, you know, I've got so many fans in Australia. I've got, you know, the Discord Twitch boys, you know, Asian Andy and Ice Poseidon and the boys who have stuck with me on my ride, I, I appreciate. And I appreciate my fans, Finn. You guys are, uh, you know, so brilliant. You're, you're out there. And, and and you're having fun with the music, Finn. That's number one. You know, like, please, sir, feed me more cum. You know? Like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> that, that's it, yeah. I was also wondering, the um, guitar parts in Ram Ranch, in that song, are they loops that you've arranged yourself, or are, is that you playing the guitar? And I, I, I'll, I'll bounce it around as if I'm scoring a movie. If I want better drums, like Prince Harry was fucked in Africa, or fist fucking Prince Harry, then, then I mix and, 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 you know, it's a bit like what Moby used to do, Finn. You know, Moby used to record stuff in his bedroom and put it out. And now, And that's basically the way I do it. Yeah, so with, I'm, I'm just thrilled. With modern exactly. recording technology, it makes it so easy as well. Exactly, but but ultimately, ultimately, Finn, you know, I wrote my lyrics today for 240. I, you know, have got the clock ship and the fuck ship and the starship and, you know, like the fucking, you know, like you know what's happening. Yes. So ultimately, ultimately, Finn, I'm just honored to be able to. be to have a creative project out there, you know. It's I'm a member of actor and I've worked in lots of movies in Hollywood and Toronto. And I just got to the point that there's so much violence, like CSI crap. And I just wanted to do a project, particularly after being involved in the Getty Hitler period. Yeah, the, I was reading about the whole Hitler thing. That was absolutely insane. Yeah, so you know, like uh, John Paul Getty has got that FBI file for espionage, bringing Nazis into New York City, shipping oil to Hitler for his paintings, his Rembrandt, and his Gainsborough. But so I just basically wanted to open a new chapter, so it became Ram Ranch. That, that's what an incredible tale, Grant. I, I, I'm going to have to head off very shortly, but I do have one I final question for you. Sure. Um, do you mind if I use some parts of this interview recorded in a video that I'm currently making? Go for it all the way. I'm honoured by my fans, man. Uh, you know, I, I have so much appreciation for, for, for the fact that you guys have fun with the music, you know, and, and just, uh, you know, gee whiz, absolutely. 
Anyway, I just want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for having this interview with me today, particularly at such a late hour. Jason, I'm honoured. I love my fans. Out there. You guys are just like uh, the best, you know, like uh, in, in the universe and beyond. I'm totally honoured. So, you know, just glad to, to, to speak to such brilliant, you know, khaki boys out there. So, yo. That, that's really nice to hear that, Grant. It's great to speak with you, man. I'll, I'll, I might talk with you later on when I send you that email. Sounds cool, boy. Uh, just the love of my Aussie friends down there, so uh, thanks for calling. You're the best. No worries. So are you, Grant. See you next time, man. Okay, pretty boy. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye.